In this lecture, we will learn two new methods for circuit analysis. The node voltage method and the mesh current methods. These methods are developed from the basic Ohm's and Kirchhoff's law that we discussed in the last lecture. These two methods are systematic and they provide the simultaneous equations of the circuit. And these equations could be solved by math techniques like grammar or even by programming or using standard programs like MATLAB or MATCAD. Before we go to the methods, we need to confirm a few definitions. In this chapter, we will use the essential node. And the essential node that connects three or more circuit elements. But the simple or basic node connects only two or more circuit elements. And the reason that we are using only the essential node to minimize the number of announce and to minimize the number of equations. Based on essential nodes, you will use essential branch. And in the mesh current method, we will use the meshes. And the mesh is a specific type of the loop. It is the symbol loop that does not enclose any other loops. This is an example showing the different types of nodes and the different types of uh, branches and so on. You can see here we have the node, symbol or basic node connecting two branches or more. But we have another essential node, B, that connect three branches or more. So we can see here we have four branches for here. We have also the meshes here. We have the planar circuit definition here, but we'll come to this later with mesh current method. Now let's go to the first method, the node voltage method, and learn how to use it. We have a few steps we should follow to solve the circuit using the node voltage method. The first step is to find the number of nodes in the circuit and select one of them as a reference or ground node and then you have n minus one nodes at each node you should apply Kirchhoff current law and find one equation and finally you have n minus one equations and you need to solve these equations to find the node voltages after finding the node voltages, you could find the currents, you could find the power, and so on. Let's have an example. Let's go to a numerical example here. So, this is an example. We have one node as a reference here. And we found that we have two other nodes. Which means we need to find two equations. One at each node. Let's apply at node 1. At node 1, we have three currents. And one of them is 5 amps, which is entering the node. So, as you can see, currents entering the node equals currents leaving the node. So, current 5 amp is entering the node. And we have two currents are leaving the node. First current, go to the right from 1 to 2. So the potential difference over the resistance, V1 minus V2. We consider the node, the current leaving. Because the current is leaving the higher voltage node to the lower voltage node. So V1 minus V2 over the resistance in that branch. And then we go to the current to ground through to ohm. So V1 minus ground over the resistance to ohms. Then simplify the equation. Repeat at node 2, but at node 2 you have four currents, 
two of them provided from the current source, and then you have another equation here. Then you have two equations, you could simplify, and then by simple eliminations, method, uh, elimination, you could find the voltages. Or you could use standard math methods like Kramer's method. If you don't remember how to use it, you could go to math and try to uh, learn more about it. Once you found the voltages, you could find the currents at each branch using the same uh, equations that we have used. And of course, if the power is needed, you could also calculate the power. In some cases, the voltage source could make some troubles. The first case, if the voltage source is connecting the reference node to another node. And this is good case because in this case, we could find the voltage directly from the voltage source. The voltage source here, 10 volt, is keeping the voltage difference between the ground and V1 to 10, and the positive here at V1 side. This means V1 equals 10. And we don't have it, it's not an unknown anymore. But if the voltage source is connecting two non-reference non nodes, in this case, you can't find the current in this branch. We, the equation for the current, the voltage difference over resistance. We do have resistance here. Then we have to merge the two nodes together to make what's called super node. So we have now super node here. And in this case, this is one node and we have four branches entering this node. This is a branch, this is a branch, this is a branch, this is a branch. Then we should write this equation for that super node. And the voltage source itself, 5 volt, is a constraint here. It's keeping the voltage difference between V2 and V3 to be 5. And as you can see, plus at V2 side. Then V2 is higher, V2 minus V3 equals 5 volts. Then we have another equation. So we could solve the circuit now. Also, if you have any other barrel branches with the voltage source, it's still a super node and you can follow the same technique but if we found the voltage source in series with another resistance then it's not super node anymore you could solve it but you have to consider the potential difference due to this one let's go to the mesh current method the mesh current method again we have few steps but in this case we assume the mesh currents and apply Kirchhoff voltage law for these meshes and then we have M equations or M meshes that should be solved to find the current and once you find the current you could find the voltage and again find the power there is a problem here with the mesh current method it is applicable only for planar circuit and the definition of planar circuit the circuit that could be drawn without it any crossing branches but some circuits like this one if you look to the diagram here the circuit you'll find crossing branches but in fact you could redraw the circuit without any crossing branches so it's still a planar circuit but this one not a planar circuit and cannot be solved using mesh current method you have to use the node voltage method in this case let's have a numerical example to learn how to use the mesh current method. First step, find the mesh, assume the mesh currents in the circuit. We have two meshes here and two mesh currents here, I1 and I2. And please note that these mesh currents are not usually equal the branch currents. We have branch currents here, I1 and I2 and I3. The mesh current I1 equals the branch current I1 through resistance 5 ohms. Same, the mesh current I2 equals the branch current I2 through the resistance 6. But in the common branch, the mesh current equals to the difference between the mesh currents. Okay, let's start by finding the uh, mesh currents. And please don't solve these types of problems using the 
uh, branch currents. You have to use the mesh currents. You apply Kirchhoff's law in the first mesh, the simple loop, then you have an equation. Apply again to the second mesh, you have another equation. We learned how to uh, uh, get these equations from the Kirchhoff's method in the last lecture. So find these equations, simplify, simplify the equations, and then you could use by elimination to find the two currents, I2 and I1. And once you found the mesh currents, you could find again the branch currents. And as I mentioned, you could also find the voltages or power. You could also use the standard math methods. If you put the equations in the matrix form, then you could apply Kramer's method to find the currents. And of course, it would be the same. In mesh current method, we have also this case of the super mesh, like super node. In super node, the super node uh, uh, happen if we have voltage source. But in the mesh current method, the super mesh appear if we have a current source in the common branches between the mesh loops. So this is an example we have. We have the first mesh here. We have the second mesh here. And in the common branch, you have cur current source here, 6 amps. And in this case, if you try to apply the mesh current method, you will not be able to find the voltage across the source. Then you have to merge the two meshes together, like this one, and this is called the super mesh. And in the super mesh, you will have one equation here, like this one. And you need to find another equation from the current source itself. The current source is a restraint here. There's a constraint here, keeping the current in this branch, which is the difference between the mesh currents by 6 amp. Then simply, and the direction of this current is up in the direction of I2, then I2 minus I1 equals 6, or I2 equal I1 plus 6. Then we have another equation from the mesh here. From these two equations, you could find the currents. Sometimes you could merge more than one, more than two meshes, like this one. We had to merge these three loops together into one mesh. And of course, we have one equation from the super mesh and two other equations coming from the current source in these branches. You, after some practice, you could learn how to find the set of equations directly by inspection methods. And this is an example how to use, uh, how to find the matrix equations using the inspection method. So you have a number of meshes, assuming the current, and each loop you have here uh, uh, the summation of the resistance. And the other side, you have the voltages. But this inspection method could be used only if all sources in the circuit are, depend are independent sources. This is the final slide. And here we compare between the node voltage method and the mesh current method, which one should be used. So as we expected, you have to check the circuit how many parallel branches, how many uh, series branches, if you have super nodes, okay? But generally, if you have a lower number of equations or lower number of unknowns, then the circuit could be solved easily. This means the number of nodes, if it's lower than the number of meshes, number of nodes minus the reference one. So you should check how many node volts you have how many equations, and for, if you used the mesh current methods, how many mesh uh, equations you need to solve. And based on this comparison, you could select which one. But there is another important point. If the circuit is non-planar circuit, in this case, you have to use the node voltage method. Thanks a lot, and see you in the discussion class. Please attend the exercise and post your questions in Canvas and be in contact. Thank you very much.